Got a bit of a Gronk's tail. Gronk, Gronk talks that somebody wants to talk NBA. We're talking NBA with the Gronk's tail. Love to hear that. We also, of course, will talk a little Jimmy Garoppolo, what's going on with the Raiders, Tom Brady's involved. Could you see a little something, something happen? Gronk's been so great with us, um, really, since he signed his deal to be a partner with FanDuel. So we've loved having him talk about these NFL topics, and we will continue to do that today. We also have Lo Labonta, who is a midfielder for the Kansas City Current in the National Women's Soccer League. And it's very exciting to have her. Um, and I guess I'm going to have to dance. I'll just shake my booty yeah. right now. Countdown in the off season, don't we? That's just what we're here for, right? I like to list off, you know, I'm in New York, I'm all about the 10 best cookies, by the way, the best ones at La Mercery. You're welcome. Uh, top 10 best burgers, by the way, the best one is at Fort Charles. And it's all about lists and countdowns and best plays, best touchdown celebrations, all the media people are doing it. And we, we're gonna dabble in that. And it's kind of early because we're still waiting for a few players like DeAndre Hopkins to find their new and best fit homes. But now that the dust has sort of settled between free agency and the draft, we thought we could count down up in Adams, top 10 off seasons from around the NFL. Now, this can be teams who crushed it, other figures in the NFL world who are just living their Darius Butlery best lives, okay? They're golfing all day, partying all night, celebrating game seven wins. It's all, that's, this is what we're looking for because there's hope around all 32 teams, and that's why it is interesting to do lists like this, because no one knows, but if I nail it, and sometimes I do, because Hamilton's a genius, then we can post these later and say, who said that? This girl, and this show did. Okay, so, like I said, those are the rules. It can be, I mean, we could we could do like a, like a coach at number eight, and then at number three, that team. So it could all happen here. At number 10, do we have a drum roll situation, Sarush? Okay, at number 10. Could I have a little drum roll from you, my friend? We're gonna start our list of top 10 off seasons with number 10 and the New York Giants. Yes, the other New York team has stolen all the headlines all off season. This man goes to a Taylor Swift concert and like everyone's all melting down and freaking out. Everyone's talking, MetLife all of a sudden belongs to him. Are we joking? Like what's happening here? But I think flying under the radar right now is exactly how Mr. Mara and company like it to be. I mean. No one saw. Who saw the 07 Super Bowl a coming from around the mountain? Nobody. 2011, nobody saw that either, especially not going into those seasons in the May, June ish time of our program. So the Giants, listen, they didn't make a big splash. They secured the building blocks, their future. They sort of quietly got a lot better. They bring Daniel Jones back right before the franchise tag deadline. They free uh, up some space. They use a tag on Saquon. They made that look really well. Granted, that Saquon thing is a bit of an asterisk, a bit of a. Mm. Um, they make the trade for Darren Waller. They bring back the anchor of their defense in Dexter Lawrence. By the way, I was in Turks and Caicos this past weekend. Hold on. I'm dying right now. I'm in Turks and Caicos this past weekend, and um, we can come off that. And I'm, I'm in, like, the car that takes you to the airport, and there's a pamphlet, and in it is, like, it's, like, a bunch of people, you know, Maria Sharapova, and, like, I forget who else, like, maybe a Kepka, somebody like that, or some, whatever. And Dexter Lawrence is on there. It's, like, their, like, bougie hotel, like, humble brag. Bougie, I mean, whatever. But, like, he was on there, and I was like, Dexter Lawrence, what is that? I mean, he's making a come up right now. I'm not now, surprised, but, like, <laughs> he's, he's the NFL star. Not a quarterback, which you'd expect it to be. Yeah. Not Mahomes. It's our guy, Dexter Lawrence, and I love it. And, That's really cool. Yeah, and this team did a fantastic job in the draft, by the way. They landed three guys with first-round potential. You like Banks? I do. Why? You're a Giants guy. Speedy. Speedy. Speedy Banks. Okay, we like that. Then they get the center, which you always need a good center. It's all about the center. Everyone talks about that. Here's Stu, Sean O'Hara, and all those guys who love that kind of talk. John Michael Schmitz and a receiver in Jalen Hyatt. If uh, Banks is Speedy, Hyatt is? Even faster, potentially. Um, I know Banks are in a faster 40 time, but Hyatt's that guy to take the top off the defense. They we'll added so much team speed, which is what they were kind of lacking last year. When this happened, Hamilton, and they did the tag with Saquon, and then they paid Daniel, all it was was, we paid Daniel Jones too much money. How can you possibly play him that much money? I have um, the shut up argument for that. For one, the cap has gone up astronomically. That 40 million kind of sounds bigger than it is, and two, 
I know it's hard for you Twitter people. Let's try to put this into perspective, shall we? There are only six starting quarterbacks on veteran deals making less than him, okay? You see the list right there. And once Burrow and Herbert get their extensions, there are going to be 13 guys making as much or more than what DJ gets this year. The Giants are betting on Daniel's development after winning them a playoff game last year. And they got some serious value when you look at the way this quarterback market is going and will continue to go unless Burrow says, like, I'll play for free, basically. Basically. Yeah. Am I going? Am I going to Cincinnati next week? Next week. Stay tuned. I might. I don't know. I gotta fix my kidney. Okay. I love what Brian Dable and Joe Shine. They're not worried about my kidney. They're worried about what they're building in New York, right here in this great city that I am. Even though everyone wants to pretend it's in New Jersey, and I don't care. It's the, right here, the New York Giants. And while it may not result in a Super Bowl this year, okay. This offseason was a massive step forward. They belong on this list. They might be belong higher at 10. What do you think? I think Giants fans are feeling really good about who's steering the ship and about how they're being viewed undersell, over deliver going into 2023. At number nine. Can I get a little Tommy Lee? All right. FanDuel family member Darius Butler. I mentioned him off the top here. I mean, he could easily be number one on this list because I don't think. Anybody's having a better run since I was with him at the Super Bowl and he was like catching passes from Gronk's 100 yards away from stage. It was crazy. We're like drinking tequila in the morning, doing push-ups, and then drinking tequila again at night. Okay, this is him. His Miami Heat and Florida Panthers, the Florida boy, they've both made runs to the finals that are way improbable, way crazy. His alma mater, UConn, they win the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament, and he was excited about that. He gets to go to Miami to the Grand Prix and hang out with Jay Leno while we're standing room only trying to figure out where to go at the Kentucky Derby. He is winning. He's beating up on kids in pickup basketball and doing play-by-plays out his own highlights. And he's, yeah, hey, Jay, hey, Jay, where's your denim on denim, buddy? And he's, I mean, I mean is Darius Butler going to be on that car show that Jay, Jay Leno does? Probably. Probably. Yeah, the custom helmet, too. Yeah, season four. Nobody's watching, Jay, but we were excited to cheer Darius on. And he's on a beautiful golf course enjoying the, the ambiance, the palm trees, the majesty of it all, putting it all over social. Man, uh, this is number eight. This is number nine. This is way too low. This is way too low. He is living his best life, and I'm here for it. I just hope that some of that luck and that, you know, Taylor Swift karma is a cat in my lap purring like a whatever, hair in my, you know, wind in my hair on a weekend. I'd have to call Aaron Rodgers for the name, for the words to those song lyrics uh, from Taylor Swift. I do just hope that the, the, they transfer to our show through osmosis because he comes on, right? Yeah. Like maybe help me with, if I ever get back into the parlay game, which I might not. <laughs> hey, those first Me and Charles Barkley, we're out. We're out of the parlay game. <laughs> not going so well for us. All right, at number eight. You have to like beat that monitor with your fist? What are you doing over there? At number eight. Sorry. <laughs> okay, Rage Against the Machine. At number eight, best offseason award goes to the Chicago Bears because I think Poles has had as good of an offseason as he could under the circumstances. Let's be honest. He inherits this roster, right? Complete disarray. It's a migraine and a kidney infection mixed in one. It's basically me. And this is how it's shaping up now. He's the Excedrin, right? He's the lithotripsy, where they put you in this pool and they break up your kidney stone with these waves. I'm telling you, it's great. That's what he has been, the elixir, the remedy for this bear squad. Of course, it started with the bang, right? He trades the number one overall pick for a package of draft picks and DJ Moore, who I love. I love Mr. Thousand Yard Receiver with me throwing him the ball. He's so good. Then Pauls rebuilds the offensive line, centered around the number one, or the first round pick, their tackle, Darnell Wright out of Tennessee. They signed Tremaine Edmonds, also a friend of ours. Like we love him, TJ Edwards, a friend of the show, one of my favorite sit-downs of this entire show. We've had great guests, guest after guest. He's incredible and he'll help with that defense. Wisconsin boy, I believe. Yep. Yeah. Um, maybe their biggest win was getting Aaron Rodgers the heck out of the NFC North. Boot it. They love it. He's dancing at Taylor Swift saying Jets from the Super Bowl. You think that clip's going to age well? And all of this is happening to support Justin Fields. I had to do that little dig at Aaron because we're talking about the Bears. Okay, who can be the first true franchise quarterback this place has seen since Sid Luckman in the 1940s? Okay? I'm a believer in Justin, given what 
We saw last year, you know, you go to the sports bar and you're like excited about your fantasy team and all of a sudden it's I'm on Raw and everybody's lighting up. Like there were all these moments where I'm looking at Justin. Like if I remember the highlights from last year that caught my eye when you're looking at 19, 80 inch Vizios, like you are going and looking at what jo Justin Fields did with very little help. So getting in this O-line, the supporting cast, getting him receivers, help on the defense, it's finally gonna put him in a position, a nice little spot to shine and give the Bears a shot to contend for a playoff spot in the NFC North. How are their odds? It's Lions, who's next? Is it Lions, Vikings, who won the division? That's crazy that they're you know behind the Lions, but Vikings I kind of get it. Vikings, Vi are, Vikings moved down after that. I believe the Bears are in second now. You tell me the Packers are still bottom of the barrel? Yep. God, that's good value at FanDuel Sportsbook, people. What if Jordan Love is great? What if Jordan Love is great? Yeah. That's the thing. That's why I don't Christian celebrate Watson. too hard that Rodgers is Christian gone. Christian Watson, dot. There's nothing to sneeze at, those Packer boys. Okay. At number seven, I'm going with Derek Carr. About time he won something. He almost won that MVP that one year. Remember 2016? Kaleche Osemele, that Velveeta block of an offensive line, and Kaleche is like, he went to, uh, he blew up my spot with Iceland. He was in that, he was, you know, in the Blue Lagoon. Remember that? I totally forgot about Remember? that. Remember? <laughs> and I was like, stop telling people about Iceland, Kaleche. Stop it. But he was so good back then when he had all the right pieces. And I'm not, I'm not sold that he has all the right pieces, but imagine getting pushed out of the organization that you not only gave your heart and soul to, I think most players do that, but you stood on that microphone stand with that Raider, and you you sold it. You were the face. You were the one saying, this is it, through a move, through all the BS, you were the guy. And the way that he's finessed this whole situation, I do think is masterful, okay? If you look at the off-season resume, this is why I think he's tops and living his best life. Look at that smile. The Raiders were gonna trade into the Saints, right? He said, uh, no, and he used his no trade clause to block the deal. That forces the Raiders to say, okay, fine, bye, we're gonna cut you. He signs with the Saints anyway, and he gets 150 mil, okay? And that allows New Orleans to keep their draft picks and they help build something up around him. This is sort of, I know we always talk about the decimal pushing of their GM, but this is a little masterclassy, even on his part, he's benefiting from what everybody's doing. He goes from a brutal division in the AFC West. You know, if I'm Brady, I'm like, oh, I don't want any of that. He goes to the NFC South, beautiful, Mwah. chef's kiss, completely up for grabs. He's getting, maybe, we're just gonna go for hope here because that's what June 1st is. Is it June 1st yet? No, that's not even June yet. Tomorrow. He's getting a reportedly healthy Michael Thomas, okay? We, Chris Olave, we know how good Chris Olave is. We know, Garrett Will, you know what Garrett Wilson says about him. We know how good he was in college. We know how good he was last year. He even got, you know, that fantastic polo out of the deal. What polo are we talking about? On the graphic. Oh, that one right there? I don't, I don't love that polo. It was kind of gold. Was it gold? Yeah. And listen, Derek, I don't know. Sean Payton should have taken those with him. Derek's taken a lot of uh, strays over the years, okay? A lot of strays. I'm happy he's gotten to a place where he's landed, he got paid, they could build around him, and he can maybe thrive. And I'm happy Sean Payton didn't take the giant label maker with him because he, you know, when he left, there's, you know, massive names across, uh, what are we saying here? The, let's pull up the video. Let me see, I need to see this. It's been a staple of Saints camp for a long time. They put right, they put the, they, he takes it, yeah. yeah. Let me, can I see it again? Can we cue that, re -cue that up? All right, yeah. This is ridiculous. What do you like think it's of this? It's one thing to do that for rookies. To do it for, like, if people don't know who Derek Carr is, you need to put a giant yeah. awkward label on the front of his helmet. I think it's funny. <laughs> yeah, I, I love like it. it. I didn't notice that. Um, okay, so Derek Carr, have, have yourself the time of your life. And the last one for today, and we'll do, and whoever we're missing, it'll be five through one, maybe tomorrow morning. So this is my last one for today. At number six, the best off seasons, whether it's figures or fans or people or coaches or teams, whatever, I think it's the Seattle Seahawks, okay? They come in at six. They were the surprise team of 2022. Sure, Giants, great, that's fine. They might pull off, though, these Seahawks, an even bigger surprise this year because they've made the right moves this offseason, okay? Let's take a look at the resume. They re-signed Geno Smith. Yeah, shorter-term deal. That breaks them off, but we'll likely saw them in just the 18th highest paid quarterback in the league position when all is said and done this offseason. God, that's good value. Yeah. That is good. What if he repeats his Pro Bowl caliber performance from this past year? How good would that be? And then they get back a franchise legend, a living legend in Bobby Wagner. He's back in the mix. And it's not really just symbolic or a nice story. And I know I talk about Bobby Wagner a lot, but this was an all pro 
last year who had 140 tackles and six sacks in L.A. He's only 33. We're talking about age. We're talking to Lane Johnson, how he doesn't even really consider his age when it comes to how he's playing and how long he wants to play in the Jason Kelsey's different positions, of course, all of that. But he's 33. I'm going to say only 33. He's got plenty left in the take, as you saw last year, and sort of a... I don't know what was going on in L.A., right? Now he gets to go back home. Pete Carroll speaking so highly of him. He's got a lot to give, and he's got a lot to give to help the rest of that defense. And then they steal the first round of the NFL draft by grabbing friends of the show. I mean, this is our team of record. This is yep. like this is our definitive team. Devin Witherspoon and the top receiver off the board, Jackson Smith and Jigba. Both of these guys met at our set in Kansas City. It was meant to be. And, yeah, you know, Carroll's going to coach his 77th year <laughs> this year. Okay, he's a cyborg. He is showing no signs of slowing down. Everybody from DK Metcalf to Yogi Roth to whoever is all saying he's just as reinvigorated. He's not going anywhere. So John Snyder and Pete, they're putting something a little special together in Seattle once again. And they're getting back to their identity. They're building around a strong running game. They've got a really physical secondary. And I wouldn't count them out. I mean, I'm picking them in the NFC West. Who would you pick in the NFC you West? For it over the Niners? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't think I that's that bold. I could see it happening. Niners, do you think you're better than the Seahawks? Right now with your quarterback situation? It all depends on that, right? How are we yeah. feeling about that? Shanahan over... I don't know. I don't know I don't know who I'd pick. I, and FanDuel, I for sure would take the value of the Seahawks yeah. if I was that kind of a person. Sounds okay. like a segment. To recap, at 10, we have the... Let's predict in June 1. <laughs> New York Giants at 9, Darius Butler. At 8, the Chicago Bears. 7, Derek Carr. And at 6, the Seattle Seahawks. I'll reveal 5 through 1 tomorrow, so stay tuned. We said Darius Butler's having a great offseason. I mean, Gronk is, Gronk is always having the best right. time ever. Well, he'll join us after this. Maybe we'll talk a little NBA. Maybe he'll eat my hair. That's just what's happening here on a, what is it today? Wednesday in New York City. Gronk's always all over the place. Let's do it! Hey, Rob. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> I'm great. I see. Nice to meet you. I like. <laughs> you might as well have been shot into space. You got that little advantage with the Mile High Club. Um, you know, going there and you know, breathing. The <laughs> yeah, I think I said that wrong. I'm not really sure, but it was football terminology. My mom got me prepared by smacking that spoon across my body. Okay. It's not Shinnecock, all right? It's Shinnecock. Hi, Mom. How you doing? Happy Mother's Day. Oh, here we, here we go again. Here we go again. If you're part of the Mile High Club, you go to Shinnecock to play a round of golf with your friends from Boston who need you right now because they are losing in big games and big spots. What a great remix, Gronk, to our usual uh, music video. Yes, that threw me off a little bit. I was expecting the highlights, but you brought the highlights um, from the FanDuel K. Adams show, so that was yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, well, it's been, it's been quite a year. I, I hear you're in Boston. I always have little ravens telling me, you know, where is Gronk? You know, your, your uh, disguise that you wear to the airport doesn't always work. People see you, and they know where you are. So how, are you mad at Jimmy Butler? Like, what, how are we feeling about the Celtics squad? You know, the Celtics are a team that is uh, pretty amazing. Uh, they are doing things that are kind of impossible to do. Um, they're defying the impossible. I mean, anything's possible, but they are defying it. Uh, it's unbelievable what Coach Eric Spolstra, what he has been doing since, what, he's been a graduate assistant in 1995. Mm -hmm. He was a cameraman. He has worked himself all the way up to the top. And uh, you just got to respect that. You see all these teams in basketball, they're forming these super teams. Uh, the Lakers, the Warriors, uh, you, you name the Knicks. Uh, you know, they have Brooklyn doing their super team. The 76ers, they're bringing in all uh, these all-stars. But guess what? Those Kansas super Bay. teams didn't work this year. And uh, the Denver Nuggets, they're not a super team. Uh, they, you know, built from the very beginning, from the ground up, and got to where they got to from all the hard work and dedication and draft picks. And same with the Miami Heat. I mean, they got Jimmy Butler. They got a good other, uh, a few other good guys, but they're both well-coached programs. So I can't wait to see these uh, NBA finals. I do love the Heat. I love the way that they just grind to get to where they got to. Yes, it was tough to see the Celtics lose because I'm a, I'm a Celtics fan as well, but. I am not going to lie, though. My favorite team and my favorite player now is the Denver Nuggets and Nikola Jokic. He is my favorite player yeah. by far. I love watching him. He is like my long-lost 
brother, Siberian <laughs> brother that is better looking than me, but has a bigger nose than me. So I love watching them play. I love the Denver Nuggets. They play together like a team. Uh, they're just amazing to watch. And I just can't wait for these finals. I think the Nuggets are going to take it all, but the Heat are going to win wow. just two games. Dan Kroenke won a Super Bowl for the Rams. I mean, the Nuggets have never been to the finals. He owns that team, too. He's looking for some hardware. That would be amazing. And I'm picturing the Rocky montage of you and Joker, like, working out a la you and Blaine Gabbert now. Like, you guys need a TV show. We need to brand this thing. It should be a moment. Yes, there's one person I do want to meet in the NBA, and that's the Joker, actually. I never met him before. Uh, he just seems like a great guy. So if I ever run into him, I'm definitely going to try and meet him. Uh, and he's just special, man. I just love the way he plays. He's got special talents out there on the court. I just love that baby picture of him. Actually, when he was a kid, he was just super <laughs> overweight, eating, eating candy bars in Siberia, just probably shooting freaking uh, plastic, uh, shooting rolled up paper into a, uh, a garbage can. That was probably his practice yeah. throughout uh, his childhood. And now he's just the MVP in the, in the NBA. So he's just so great to watch. I love him. Yes, he is a, the Serbian sensation, of course. So S Siberia sounds like it might be a little cold to shoot some hoops, but, but he's incredible. We cannot wait to watch him, of course. So Jimmy Butler takes down your squad. You have a lot of respect for Spolstra. You have a lot of expe uh, respect for Jimmy Butler. He is trademarking his name, um, Himmy Buckets, I think is what he's saying, okay? So he wants, you know, he's doing some sort of business. W first of all, what do you think of Himmy Buckets? Pretty good one. It's, it's kind of complicated. Yeah, it is a little complicated. I mean, Hemi Buckets, it doesn't really flow that well. I feel like Jimmy Buckets <laughs> flows very well, but Hemi yeah. Buckets, I mean, he's going to have to come up with uh, some, you know, a, the great clothing line that matches well with Hemi Buckets. So it all depends on his creativity with the clothing line and the drink line that's going to go along with it. Now, when, when Tom Brady would... We'd always hear news, like the media, I don't know why we were obsessed with this, but every time he would he would trademark something, I'm trying to think of what they were. Like he would do all of these trademarks, people would go crazy. Did you guys know that stuff was going on? Like it would literally predict the next year's Super Bowl run after the one that you guys just took home, it's crazy. Yeah, it, it is crazy when people, when athletes, only athletes, I feel like, when they trademark a name or a saying, it just goes ballistic on the internet. Everyone always flipping out about it, making their comment about it. And, uh, but there's trademark things every single day. But just for some reason, for athletes, just people love just to go ham for the trademark, which is great. And um, yeah, Tom sometimes. He did a couple trademarks, a couple other players did some trademarks, and you would never know about them. But then all of a sudden you sign on the Internet or on Twitter and boom, it was all over the place. And that's yeah. how you hear about it. I mean, that's basically how you hear all your news these days is uh, through the Internet, from a social media app or Twitter. So um, it is what it is. What did you think of Tampa Bay? That was one of them, right? Tampa, Tampa, Tampa Bay is pretty good. Yeah. I like Tampa Bay. It, that was really good. Now uh, that was creative. Uh, that's for sure. What about the Tampa Bay Gronkineers? That one was my favorite. I saw I that. that. that one wasn't, it wasn't trademarked, but I saw someone write that before. I was like, "That's clever." I really like that one. Yeah, we need to get Joker one. Our our the Serbian sensation. Like I don't know what we're doing. There was the Croatian sensation and Tony Kukoc Serbian back in the nineties. About... I like that. I would buy a shirt yeah. serving sensation. I would 100% 100% buy it. He needs to come out with it. Trademark it. You need to go meet him. I'm excited that you have so much respect for him uh, and that you even know about his baby pictures. That's amazing. Speaking of baby pictures, I'm sure you have a lot of your brother, but we have a recent one. Have, have you seen your brother Chris and his bod, I guess, size this up? What is going on? Wow, so I actually didn't see this post, but I keep hearing about it that my brother Chris G put some massive leg day posts up uh, for some motivation and uh, that was the first time I saw it. And damn, look at his legs, those calf muscles are popping. I actually just watched his NFL highlight film last night. He sent it to my buddy and then my buddy sent it to me. He was like, yo, Chris G's highlight film. I was like, no way, let's, let's check it out. I put it on the big screen and uh, he was a really good fullback. He was an athletic fullback. He got the job done in the blocking game. And also he had about uh, six carries in his uh, professional career too. 
And uh, he has one touchdown, a one-yard pass from Tony Romo, and he created the Gronk spike after the touchdown. It was actually a vicious Gronk spike. So he was actually the first Gronkowski brother to do the Gronk spike. Uh, so he claims, that's his claim, is that he started it, which he kind of did. But uh, he actually had a couple of nice blocks as well, and his yak after a couple of the catches as well. It got me pumped up. I was like, wow, it was pretty dope watching his highlight film. It, it had me thinking a little bit, but it didn't, it didn't push me over the top, though, all right? Thinking about... Like how fun that is to play the game of football, <laughs> just watching his highlight film. But then I remembered it was just highlights. I mean, the highlights always get you, Kay. They always get you thinking. I'll say, mm, I'll say this, though. You were not you were watching game film. You were watching real nitty-gritty stuff. I think a lot of people wonder, what does Gronk do on a random Tuesday? Is he out at some fancy restaurant? Is he, like, hobnobbing with A-list celebrities? Is he at the Taylor Swift concert, a la Aaron Rodgers? But you're watching, <laughs> you're watching tape. You're grinding through tape, Gronk? You're going to be an NFL coach. Come on. <laughs> Actually, yesterday was not a random Tuesday, actually. Yesterday, here, here it is. It was kind of a, a impactful day. It was a lot of action. I actually went and shot a cameo in the movie Good Burger 2 yesterday. It's shooting in Providence. And uh, Nickelodeon's uh, the one producing the movie. So I got to shoot a cameo in Good Burger 2. And then I came home. I took my roommate. Uh, we have a roommate here. And uh, his name is Bobby Goons. I took him around. I was his uh, <laughs> chauffeur, you know, for about an hour and a half. And then I got home. And uh, he built a, he'll be, he built me a nice basketball court about five years ago. I got a nice hoop, and uh, it was about to Whoa. get dark out. I turned the light on. I played basketball. I shot hoop last night for an hour, just shooting around, doing some dribbling drills. It was a lot of fun. I loved doing that. And then I went into my infrared sauna for 30 minutes after it last night. Got out at 10, you know, rehydrated, had a shake, woke up, and got prepared for the K. Adam Schultz. So that was an impactful uh, Tuesday. I just feel like it sounds like you're gearing up for something. Uh, no, I just like to stay in shape. I like to do activities. I mean, I'm not going to sit on the couch and just mope around. I like to shoot hoops. It's the <laughs> NBA Finals. I had to go out. I was shooting my three-pointer, practicing my three-pointers, because whenever the summertime comes and my friends are around and yeah. they challenge me to a game of pig, I can't lose. You know, it's bragging rights. Yeah. What about when you and Chris, if Chris were to challenge you to... Uh, what, what do you even call those leg li lifts? What do you even call them? Chris, I don't know what that is. Yeah. Who wins? A leg press we were, or leg press competition? Yeah. Chris G wins in the weight room for sure. Uh, he's the ultimate worker outer. Uh, he gets his workout in basically every day. But uh, we were workout partners when we were at the University of Arizona together. He actually looks totally slim now, especially compared to uh, his highlight film that I was watching yesterday, the NFL highlight film. He was way more buff he had a uh, had a lot more weight on him as well so he's slim now he's ripped up i kind of liked him when he was more buff and and more chunky uh you know he had more meat behind him which was pretty cool watching it uh when i was watching this film but uh it's impressive what he can do he works hard he also uh runs um the company yeah he started ice shaker and he does a great job with it every single yeah. day and also he has four kids i love watching them they're all i think the oldest one's about eight years old and they all play sports and they're all the greatest so he's a great dad he's a great businessman he gets his workout in every single day and he says it keeps him sane uh doing that workout every day and i agree that's why i still got to work out and do activities it keeps me sane that's what you say, and you have nothing but love for your brothers. Four kids, so that's a big, busy grandma, I'm sure. Yeah, and he's still jacked, too, which is pretty wild. He, he gets it in every day. <laughs> Those guys, you saw him. I'm not that jacked, but I'm more athletic than him, I, I would say. He's getting too jacked. Yeah. I like to stay mobile, uh, flexible. I beat him in the, pickleball, my producers, too. <laughs> my producers are asking me if you know the Good Burger song. Uh... No, uh, wait. Neither do I. Yeah, welcome to Good Burger, home of the Good Burger. Can I take your order? Great. <laughs> Can you tell burger, us a little bit about burger. the? Can I take your order? Are you play Are you playing yourself? Uh, kind of. It, it, you know, my name. I mean, I'm kind of playing myself. I'm a inconvenience customer, so. Um, you know, I'm getting terrible service <laughs> while I'm in the Good Burger. So that's kind of how it goes down. And then I get a little bit mad, but I'm technically not playing myself, but I technically okay. am. 
Do you like orange soda, Gronk? Do I like orange soda? Um, you know, I was never a soda guy growing up. My mom, my parents, they never let us drink soda either growing up. I mean, Dr. Pepper was always my go-to when I was allowed, when we stopped at Burger King once every three years. And uh, I was able to uh, get a Dr. Pepper with the kids meal, which was a, a treat, that's for sure. Uh, but uh, orange soda, I'll go with orange soda. I mean, I'll, I, if I needed an orange soda and I was in the mood, probably once a year I, I'd drink an orange soda. So. I'm, I mean, I'm not against it. It tastes great, but I just, I don't really do yeah. soda. Uh, yeah, I, I hear you on that. Listen, when you get back, so you're, you're shooting in Providence, you're in the Boston area. When you get back there, what, <laughs> hi, Gronk's finger. What, uh, what, what are the places that sort of bring back the best memories for you? Maybe even just in Foxborough. It's such a small town. There's a couple bars, a couple places to eat. There's a hobby shop. Like, where does your head go? You know, I kind of come back here for like recovery time. That's for sure. I mean, I got a nice huh. little setup, you know, my infrared sauna. I got a little weight room. I got a basketball court. I got a pool. Um, I go to the TB12 center around the corner to get my massages, to get me back on track, to get my body feeling good. So I don't really go uh, too many places when I'm back up here in the Boston area. It's kind of more of a recovery, a retreat center. I would treat it as I get all my workouts in, I get my body strong again, I get my pliability in with my massages, that. all that good stuff. And then I go and I hit the road again. And I come, boom, <laughs> you see me back out on the streets. Three weeks, you don't know where I am. I'm over in this city. I'm I'm doing the Kay Adams show from that city. I'm doing this over there, I'm in that country. And then when I get worn down again, I come right back here and I do my retreat. Uh, I need about five to seven days retreat. You know, silence, wow. you know, watch some movies, watch some football games or not or whatever sports game is on. And then I'm ready to hit the road again. So I recover quick, though. I recover super quick. I wonder if I wonder if, you know, you ran into Blaine Gabbert last week in Tampa Bay. I wonder if you'll run into Jimmy Garoppolo at TB12 because, you know, Jimmy G failed his initial workout his initial conditioning test with the Raiders which is people are drawing some cute storylines to Tom Brady being interested of course he's got some investments already in Vegas maybe potentially with the Raiders um what do you make of that whole Jimmy G situation Gronkster yes yeah, so that that situation is uh is pretty wild for me but uh also Blaine Gabbert's not with the Raiders he he's with the Kansas City Chiefs Part, I know <laughs> Yes, so you tricked me there. I was thinking he was their backup, but he went to the Chiefs. But Brian Hoyer no. is the backup right there. But I have actually never heard of that situation. I'm not really sure what happened. So, well, he failed the physical at the beginning, and then they signed him, though, and they well, they waived the physical or something. And, like, how did that work again? What yeah. was that called That of uh, what they did? I, I don't understand the situation. It, it, to was, the an, it was an addendum. It was an addendum that he had signed, so he failed, and it was all, he got the deal before taking that initial exam, and he failed it because he has, it, you know, he had ankle surgery after it was done, okay? So now it's like he's trying to recover, he wants to be the quarterback. They got him on a good deal, like they want him to be the guy, he knows McDaniels, you know that whole rap. Um, but there's a world where if he fails, I don't know if it's the next one or the one that they've decided was the one with that addendum. If he fails that Gronk, they get they can get rid of him, no strings attached. They have no, they don't get a hit, they get no money. It's kind of bad for Jimmy Garoppolo, good for the Raiders. The question is, you know, can Brady, if he, uh, you know, buys into the team and owns a piece, even if it's a baby piece, of the Las Vegas Raiders, he could be the quarterback if the 32 owners all agree that he could do that. Do you think that's something he could be talked into doing by one visored Josh McDaniels? Now, th this is the craziest thing I've, I'm hearing all <laughs> month so far in the month of May. And I've heard some crazy things throughout the whole month of May. Um, of course, <laughs> it has to do, do, do some, you know, has the name Tom Brady attached to it. There's always going to be a storyline, yeah. no matter what, about him coming back. Because like I said, I think he can play all the way till the age of 50 years old. Uh, just from what I've seen, just being around him for so long. So it's always going to be a story, no doubt about that. But if Jimmy just does what he needs to do in the rehab process, he's going to pass that physical in the end, and then it's going to be no story at all, and he's going to be the quarterback of the Raiders. 
But if he doesn't heal up for some reason, which it happens, you know, some people don't pass physicals or they don't come back as strong as they do from a, uh, from after a surgery, then that's going to be a story. That's going to be a headline. And that's going to put the Oakland Raiders in a difficult situation. So it's basically all on Jimmy Garoppolo on how he treats his rehab and how he comes back. And if he just does everything right and he passes that physical, then the there's going to be no problem. He'll be out there out on the field. If he already Tom, knows if the he play doesn't, role. If he doesn't, would Tom, like, can Tom, can, can, can Tom not answer his phone? Oh, like my if Tom gosh. Not, you're saying he can play till 50. If he does not, if he doesn't pass that physical, the speculation of Tom Brady coming back and playing for the Oakland Raiders is going to be on everyone's radar. You know, there's no doubt about it. You know, a radar across the whole world that he's going to be the quarterback of the Oakland Raiders. And I don't know. If that's the plan at all, I don't know anything going on at all. I have no clue. I didn't even know he was buying into the Oakland Raiders until I saw it on the bottom line ticker um, of ESPN. So I'm not sure what's going on. I'm out of all of that. But uh, it's always yeah. going to be speculation because it's Tom Brady. There's no doubt. It's always going to be Amazing. a story. It's 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 so true. We appreciate you, Gronk. And I just have a feeling my speculation is not maybe not that you'll coach, not that you'll go play until, unless Tom balls you and you go and join Josh McDaniels again, who's a tough coach, so we'll see, and it's a tough division, we'll see. Uh, but I think you should have a infrared sauna, a Gronk-sponsored business sauna. You love the sauna. And I think you should create one because you, can t- you clearly love it. I do create one. I actually want to start like a little smoothie shop studio one day where you like you walk in and it's about uh, like 1500 square feet of a big room with inf- yeah. where it's infrared sauna heated and then you can do yoga in it. It's about 105 degrees and then you can do little workouts in it that flush your whole body out. Uh, I love that type of stuff. You feel great after. And then also then you're done and then attached to it is a nice smoothie shop. Gronk smoothies, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Extra sauce extra syrup in the in the smoothie <laughs> to make it taste delicious maple syrup that is so uh, i've always dreamed about doing no, that also sure. there's this italian ice that i love so i can open up a store called daddy's ice that would be the name of my italian ice joint would be daddy's ice so maybe one day daddy's I'll open ice it. if i get motivated we'll see yeah, Daddy's Ice. Okay, well, that's more than I the more than I thought I would hear today. We appreciate you, Gronk. Daddy's Ice meets Smoothie Shop. Elf, Will Ferrell, maple syrup in it. Swirl it around and in infrared sauna it all up. You want to sweat while you're... I love it. Gronk, you're the best. We'll talk to you in a little bit. Up next, we have a very, very special guest. Do not miss it. Very special guest from Kansas City, the Kansas City Sportswoman of the Year. She's a midfielder for the Kansas City Current and the National Women's Soccer League. She's also, I mean, this is the Selly Queen, everybody. Everybody knows her for going viral and having this goal-scoring celebration that made its way into the NFL and has not lost any momentum. Uh, Lola Banta, welcome to the show. Hi. Hello. Thank you for having me. It's so, so nice to meet you. We just had Gronk on. I'm not trying to blow your spot because I'm sure you're a more of a Travis Kelsey gal, but you do have a little soft spot for Gronk. Oh, 100%. My dad, so my dad is from Boston, so I grew up Got it. loving the Patriots, and um, Gronk was just this big, goofy guy, and I had no idea how he could be <laughs> so good at football. Um, so, yeah, he was one of my favorite players. I mean, especially when... Pro athletes, you know, they just enjoy what they do and they're out there having fun. And that is what I try and do as an athlete now. So he was one of the first guys that was just enjoying his time out there. So I'm glad he talked about his Gronk spike. We're all about the sellies today. So yeah, that, that was a great little segment. I mean, Gronk Spike has not gone away, and neither has your celebration that stole the show in your spot and then transcended into others. You went viral. This was last year with this celebration. When you see this, like, are you sick of talking about it already, Lo, or do you love it? I love it because I love <laughs> how much joy people get out of it. If you know me and you're with me every single day, this is exactly who I am. I'm always dancing. I'm always trying to have fun. So every time someone brings it up, I love it. I just hate when they bring it up in front of my father. That is the brutal part. He <laughs> does not He does not approve. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine a hard-nosed New England, no BS guy uh, enjoying that commentary that's surrounded uh, around that. But I mean, has Hollywood come calling? Because 
the sell is almost too good. Where you're, who knew that you were doing this? Are your teammates mad at you? Because I would be. I know they, again, I always encourage them to come up with celebrations. So mm. I had warned only a couple people because, you know, I do the Got fake it. injury. So I had to warn my athletic trainer. I was like, yo, if I do this, don't <laughs> worry. Keep your spot. Maybe bring me some water. But no, nah, I had to warn her. But I think that that's why it went viral, you know, is the element of surprise. Yeah. Um, and I've yet to be able to top it with something, but I just, I love that the whole league now is celebrating. I don't want them to do it against us, but I love that people enjoy it and are just going out there and celebrating a goal. I mean, everyone loves it except the athletic trainers who think it's probably an absolute nightmare. <laughs> and a migraine, oh, but I think it's really fun. <laughs> Listen, Gronk's doing these cameos in these movies, right? 80 for Brady. He just did some Good Burgers, a Nickelodeon spot. Like, we need to get low involved here because those acting skills were chef's kissable, if I say so myself. Um, this moment went so viral. I, I can't imagine what that's like. And it's still going and going. And for it to make its way into the NFL is pretty freaking incredible. Okay, so we had we had running backs like like Alexander Madison used you as info. Which also, the athletic trainers are like, I hate this low woman person. This is awful. The NFL <laughs> finds him six thousand five hundred bucks for the celebration. That's like two thousand per twerk, low. Bruh, it's. I bet if he didn't go down to his knees, he'd be cleared. That. That was the next level commitment. And honestly, worth it. I think he went viral as well and everybody had his back. Why are you finding this guy? We should have started a GoFundMe for him or something because he did not yeah. deserve that fine. That was quality right there. Uh, are you cooking up anything new, different? Like everybody's embracing the fun, but are you? is there anything we should be looking forward to or on the radar? I love that everybody on my team because I'm so small thinks that they can just lift me up so we're gonna probably do something like that to be honest I would love that I'm playing more of a defensive role this year so I don't get I don't Got get it. to shoot as much but I hope I score and we can do this little lift that one of, a couple of my teammates have planned and Alex Madison isn't the only NFL connection to you and your work and what you do and what you inspire so many people uh, around our country and even our world to do and get up and be a part of. Brittany Mahomes and her husband, Patrick, uh, they're co-owners of the Kansas City Current, where you are a midfielder and a injury faker. And Brittany Mahomes has been such a huge force for the sport. I follow her on Instagram. That's how I see a lot of what you do, what you guys are doing. She broke ground on the world's first stadium built for a women's professional team. How important is that type of commitment from ownership when we're trying to grow the women's game? Yeah, it's unbelievable that, so when we were first year, I've been with this team now for almost 10 years. And when we were first year, you know, we, we didn't have anything. We didn't have the backing of the sport or I mean the city. So it was really hard playing here. And then when they brought us back and the owners were like, look at this, you know, teal rising, get them out there. We, my husband's yeah. on the men's soccer team here. And I think more people recognize me and shout out me in the streets than him. And we got to We got to keep him humble. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's huge. And actually speaking of Brittany, she just messaged me and she was like, you got to get her to do the twerk Selly. She told me, she said, let her know you got to do it. So <laughs> Don't let her down. Me? Yeah. <laughs> Brittany, honestly, I deserve that from Brittany because I, I like, I bother. I talk about Brittany off. I love her. I love what she does as a woman, as a confident force in supporting her husband's goals and also having her own and being so involved in the community, by the way. And I'm not twerking. I'm totally avoiding this. this is what, I'm a professional here, so I'm going to swing it into this. Also, she's not a Kansas City girly. Like, she's not from there. Do you know what I'm saying? And neither are you. You played in California. You're saying your dad grew up a New England fan. But there's something about Kansas City that sticks to people, that makes people like a Brittany Mahomes want to bring a franchise or be part of a franchise that makes Patrick want to build a Whataburger and invest in the city that they are living in and playing in that they didn't really have ties to before that. What is it about Kansas City? And talk to those fans who support you throughout the year. Yeah, 100%. I think everybody knows that I will forever claim California. I'm a Cali kid 
through and through. But like I said, I've been loyal to this team. I've been with this organization since the beginning. And we come back because of the fans in the city. They just love their sports teams. And that's 100% it. You know, it's not like we have beaches or mountains. We have the passion for our sports here. And that's that's what keeps me coming back for sure. You feel it, like I said, in the streets. And that's what I love, you know, at the bars. I mean, it has nothing to do with the free shots that people are always buying me when I'm out. That, that has yeah. nothing to do with it. Nothing at all. But it's definitely like Mahomes just said the other day, you know, I don't need money. I'm good. I just want rings and stuff. Well, he also already owns this entire city. I think he has a stake in every professional team, but that's because they're buying into the love for the sports here. So kudos to them, you know, let them know if they ever want to adopt yeah. me. I'm, I'm up for grabs, <laughs> you know, cause I will gladly oh, your poor, your go into that family. Listen, oh, no, he's, listen he's your, dad already has a, your dad has it rough <laughs> enough. Your dad has it rough enough with his new England squad chipping up to be what it is in that division. Like let's <laughs> like, like your poor dad, you can't leave him now. No, no, he's coming with us. I'm pretty sure their guest house has plenty of room. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Lo, I would love, we have to go, but I would love to have you on to talk a little bit about the World Cup uh, and sort of scene set for me. It's set to kick off July 20th. I need to know the best players. I need to know what's going on, who to look at, who's on the come up. So do you promise me, if you come back and if Brittany Mahomes makes an appearance on my show, I will twerk all day for you to set it. I'll do it. I'm quoting you. I'm sending her that right now. Done. <laughs> Done. We're doing it. I'll twerk. And, you know, FanDuel, you're just going to have to deal with it. And don't you dare try to find me, FanDuel. Don't you even think about it. I will twerk my little heart out. We appreciate you. Lo, we love you. Uh, love to your husband. And congrats on the award. All right, we got a big show. Last show of the week. Last show in New York tomorrow. Who's joining us? Leonard Fournette on the program. Oh, he was getting all the DMs from the teams. He'll be at, we're gonna find him a match tomorrow. That's what we will do. Xavier Woods, New Panther, former cowboy, also on the program. Do not miss it. I'll put on lipstick tomorrow.